Okay, so we are now um, we are now going to start looking at uh, at exponential functions. Now, an exponential function is super interesting because it's uh, it's a function that grows very similar to how a uh, how a parabola grows in that it you know it, it doesn't grow in a linear way and it's going to give us a curve but the exponential functions don't um, they either are completely decreasing all the time or completely increasing depending upon what kind of an exponential function you have and so I think what uh, what's uh, I'm going to test this out here what's yeah that should work out pretty well or maybe we'll get a little smaller what's uh, what's cool about these is that um, it's going to introduce like some new things to us uh, and some new vocabulary that we're going to deal with and uh, it kind of fascinating stuff and I, I think you'll like it so um, this first lesson we're going to talk about is just basic exponential functions and then we'll um, move into transformations and things like that all right so um, so what we have here is it says a function like y equals 100x, where the base is a constant and the exponent is the independent variable, is an exponential function. All right, so they've got this, this thing they're showing us right here, this 100x. And so what you'll notice is that you've got your variable. We're used to things like, you know, y equals x squared, right? We're not used to y equals, you know, 2x, right? That's completely different, and it's going to give us something really, really strange. Right, so uh, so that's the first thing about exponential functions is you'll notice that your variable is always the exponent. That's why they call them exponential functions, right? Um, and this is the general form of it right here. And the ones we're going to look at are right now um, are ones where uh, the number that you're raising is uh, the the base, right? And that's what they're using b for base is always greater than 1 because if you if you take uh, any number of exponent of 1 you're never going to get anything that interesting right we will look at some others where it's less than 1 but that doesn't give us exponential growth that gives us something else um, but we're going to look at that in a, a couple more videos so for right now we're just talking about these and then it says this weird thing it says the graph of an exponential function has an asymptote which is a line that the graph approaches so in this one right here, right, if you, if you look at it, right, it's got this thing that goes up, 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 right, it starts here, and it looks like it's on the x-axis, and it's coming, it's curving up, it goes through this point, and so I think what it's important to note is that um, this never actually touches this axis, and, and, I'll, and when we do some examples, you'll see why, right, it'll start to make sense. Um, and they're going to ask us about domain and range, like they always do. And your x is always going to be basically everything, all real numbers. And y, your range is, generally speaking, going to be from wherever the asymptote is going to positive infinity, or when we do some transformations, wherever the asymptote is going down to negative infinity, depending upon it, right? And then these things usually have a, have a y-intercept that we talk about, right? And then um, there's no symmetry with these right um, and there's really no extrema because you don't have any turning points or anything and um, you know it says here continuous one-to-one -one and increasing graph right so it's just it's it's one line right it's uh, it's a smooth line it curves and you know in this case it increases like we said all the time so let's uh, let's can the chit chat and let's just kind of do a couple of these all right it says graph y equals three to the x power, state the domain and range. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go, we're gonna have our x here, okay, and then we're gonna have our y equals three to the x. Okay, so for x, um, let's just let's just use this and just just assume that these are all kind of like one right now, right? So this would be you know negative one negative 2, negative 3, we got 1, 2, 3, and I think we'll do the same thing here, right? Um, uh, so what, uh, actually, we're going to, and then we're going to do this uh, by twos. So we'll go to 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 
12, 14, 16, 18. Okay. So for x, let's put in negative 3 first. All right. So we're going to have y equals 3 to the negative third power. Now, if you remember how negative exponents work, right, basically what that means is it's going to be y equals 1 over 3 to the third power. Okay? So 1 over 3 to the third is 1 over 3 times 3 times 3, which is 1 27th, right? And 1 27th, sorry, I wrote that stupid. A 27th is a pretty stinking small number. If I put it in a calculator, right, it gives me 0 0.03. Right? So it's really, really, really close to the x-axis, right? When I do negative 2, right, it's going to give me y equals 3 to the negative 2, which is y equals 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth, right? And 1 ninth is like, I think, 0 0.111, right? And so we're getting a little bigger, but it's still really small. Right? And I'm actually being kind of generous where I'm graphing it. When you do negative 1, you get y equals 1 over 3 to the 1, which is 1 third. And so now we're, it's getting a little bigger. Right? I'm, like I said, I'm still not doing this really justice. I should probably, probably redo these because right? they're, they're too big. I'm making them way too big. But you get the idea, right, that these are really, really tiny, right? And so I'm going to take this, and this should be, like, um, basically almost on the axis. This is a little higher, and this is just a little higher, right? And now um, when we get this one, right, I'm going to put in my simplified versions here. We got 1 27th, 1 9th. One third, and when you put zero in, that's when it, we start to get some kind of normal numbers. Anything the zero power is one, right? So you get zero, one, and so oh, that's nice. We can go up here and put a point where about one would be, and then when you get one, you get y equals three to the one power, which is three, right? Well, oh well, thank God we're starting to get some rational size numbers here. You put two in, you get y equals three squared, which is nine. And then you start to go, well, wait a minute, now these things are going to get away from us, right? And this, if you put 3 in, you get y equals 3 to the third, which is 27, which is, you know, like basically kind of, you know, up here somewhere, right? It's not even on the graph. So you get this absolutely insane graph, right, that kind of comes down, and it comes down really steep. It takes a really kind of hard turn. Right, but it is, but it, you know, and then it's going to get smaller and smaller and closer and closer to this axis. But the thing is, it's never going to touch the axis, right? It never touches this x axis, which is our asymptote, right? Because think about it, let's take a really large number, let's take like negative, or a really small number, I should say, let's take like negative, I don't know, 20, right? Well, the, if you put that in this equation, you have y equals 3 to the negative 20 power, which is 1 over 3 to the 20th. Well, 3 to the 20th is, you know, is an absolutely giant number, right? And just to give you some context, like I'm, I'm doing 3 to like the 8th power right now, or 3, and I'm in the thousands. So you're going to get, you're going to get 1 over an absolutely enormous number, right? Well, 1 over an enormous number makes a very small number, right? It's 1 divided by, if this, if your denominator continues to grow and your numerator stays 1, you get a very, very small number. And so this thing is getting closer and closer to 0, but it never really quite touches it, right? So that's why they call it an asymptote, right? And so then when we do our domain and range, your domain is you can put any x values in, right? And so you got, you know, any from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then your range is basically y is greater than or equal to 0, right? It's anything where it's greater than or equal to 0. So it's, uh, you know, they're nice. 
they're, they're really nice for figuring out domain and range and pretty straightforward that way. And I apologize about how crooked this graph is, but you know, that's how it goes. All right, so let's do one more. Okay, just to kind of get our, hand, our head wrapped around it. All right, so in this next one, we got graph y equals four to the x power, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna, do, uh, we're gonna do the same thing. There is a, a way to like graph lines on this. And I used to, uh, I used to know how to do this pretty well, but uh, oh well, I don't remember. So let's see, can I, oh, here we go, right? So I'm gonna go, uh, we're gonna put in a, put in a line here. And we're going to put in one here, okay, and then we'll put in one here, okay. So now when we do this, right, we got we got x, and you get y equals four to the x, and then um, and then we'll just have y here, right, because we're putting that in. Um, so again, let's do let's do uh, negative three. Right, so you get y equals four to the negative third power. I'm just gonna leave the y out. Four to the negative third is one over four to the third. Well, one over four to the third, four to the third is 64 because it's four times four times four. So you have one sixty-fourth, which uh, equals approximately 0. Point, we're just gonna say zero one, six, right? So it's not even two hundredths, right? So it's really, really small. It's really small. It's basically, as far as how we have this set up, because if we're going by twos again, right? For how we have this set up, it's going to basically effectively be on the x-axis, but we know it's not actually on the x-axis, okay? Um, if we put negative 2 in, we get 4 to the negative 2 power, which is 1 over 16. 1 16th is, you know, it's larger, but it's still pretty small. It's 0 point, we, we still haven't gotten bigger than, you know, it's like that, right? So it's, it's bigger, but it's not really bigger. All right, negative 1 is going to give us one fourth, right? And so that's, you know, 0 0.25. <coughs> so excuse me. So that's going to be, you know, we're getting a little bigger here. And I'm, like I said, I'm being generous. You put zero in, you got four to the zero, which is one. All right. So now we're, now we've got a nice normal number. You put one in, you have four to the one power, which is four, right? And so you can see this one like the other one, but even more so, grows like, holy cow, it grows fast, right? This becomes 16, right? So this is already here. So you've got this thing that is basically skirting along the x-axis. It hits this, and then all of a sudden it just whoop. It just flares up really, really fast, and it's going to go up that way, right? Sorry, this isn't more smooth. But you're getting, you're getting the idea, right? It's just, it's like a boomerang curve. It takes this, it hits this, and all of a sudden, pfft, it heads up, okay? So, uh, so that being said, um, our domain, again, is all real numbers. I'm writing this a little different than I did before, right? And then our range is basically going to, again, be y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, because it's the zero is still our asymptote, right? It's never going to quite hit that. So, I hope this kind of helps. Basically, whenever you graph these, you just got to kind of put in, you know, a, a number of values till you can kind of effectively see what's going on. So it's pretty much fleshing out this middle area, and then understanding the end behavior of these is all pretty predictable. Okay, so I hope this is helpful to you. I'm going to try and find. Uh, I think here so I can um, so I can stop this. All right.